Legacy Project. We are thrilled to have with us today Justice Gertrude Turkornu of the Supreme Court of Ghana, a woman who's had an extraordinary life. And we're so fortunate that she is willing to share her life and her lessons with all of us. Thank you so much, Justice, for joining us today. Thank you, Judge Williams. Thank you. Well, you have had quite an extraordinary career. Currently, you're a justice on the Supreme Court of Ghana, and before that, you were on the high. You were on the Court of Appeal, and before that, you were on the High Court. But your story really began in Winneba, the central region of Ghana. Would you share with our audience how you grew up? And what inspired you as a young girl to pursue your education? I grew up in a very loving environment. My dad is a retired teacher. My mom was a, is a um, now she doesn't do so much, uh, but she was a homemaker. She was a baker and she did all sorts of stuff. But um, it was a very loving environment. My dad admired women lawyers. And so I'm told that from babyhood, he declared I'd be a lawyer. And uh, he was, he watched over the pro process. He, he made sure I didn't forget that. Uh, he endeavored to get me to the best girl's school. And when he says, well, I didn't want to go back to the school, I got into the best mixed school in this country, Wesley Girls High School and later Chimoto School. And, and so I grew up, with the understanding that uh, I was to be a lawyer. And I, I think I liked it. So once I passed my exams, I entered the law faculty and uh, later to the law school. And I don't think I've, I've ever, I've ever regretted being a lawyer and now a judge. It's a journey I've enjoyed. Yeah, and, and you said, <laughs> and I, I know that one of the things you did when you were growing up, you actually worked with your mom in the bakery. And, yes. and so what were some of the lessons in that loving environment? Some of the things that encouraged you, because it was not an easy road. There were not that many women at the university or at the law school or really in the courts. So mm -hmm. what helped inspire you? What words of wisdom did they share with you that helped you through the years? I think that a basic um, part of Ghana's identity is that the women are workers. Um, even if they are not in formal employment, if you went into our markets, it's teeming with women. Um, so in the environment I grew up, women may, were either teachers or nurses or administrators or homemakers like my mother, bakers, um, but everywhere you found women and they were working. Second, in the law faculty, we had um, Professor Quenya here. We had, uh, who is known for her work on the International Criminal Court. Uh, we, we had, I remember Professor Yalakam. There were many women, you know, not as many as the men, but there was a presence of females that didn't make you feel intimidated as a woman. And... Um, I must say that I've hardly ever been too conscious of being a woman. I went to an all-girls school, which I said was one of the best girls' schools in this country, and we were taught that excellence was a way of life. And so I would say that one of the lessons I picked up is that if you allow a person to grow up in an environment where they didn't feel um less than, you can get the best out of them. And you chose, once you passed your exams, you chose to go to the university and you were well known for your love of students and sharing knowledge. What, uh, why did you choose that path first? We're gonna talk about your private practice years, but teaching, why was that so important to you? Um, once again, it may be the influence of my father, but my father is a retired director of education. Uh, in fact, we lost him this year, a few I'm months sorry. ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, we buried him on the 
3rd of September. And um, so, but the, he, he was huge and he towered in my life, not because he was overbearing, but he was, he was loving, he was there. And so I suspect that, and actually when my parents met, both of them were teachers. My mom was a primary school, was a primary class three teacher. And it's after marriage when she had four children in quick succession that she left the classroom. And, and so I think that being a teacher's child, growing up around school compounds, and also appreciating the power of learning, maybe that's what has always drawn me to being um, a teacher. And uh, that's something that you and I have in common because both <laughs> of my parents were teachers. Lovely. <laughs> and uh, I Lovely. Was to teach once I became a lawyer and a judge. And I know one of your jobs in law school, and we're going to talk uh, more about your next step, private practice, you interned for FIDA, working for FIDA, the Women's Rights Organization. Why did you make that choice? Uh, this was actually right after law school during the uh, my national service. And I thought it was exciting finding all these women lawyers. They were very inspirational. And, and, and so um, it was exciting. And then the work they did, it was a legal aid clinic. You got to meet all these underserved women who had what society would have thought would, were petty problems, but were real issues. You know, um, somebody, ladies who needed men to pay up for maintenance, ladies whose uh, stall were being taken away in the market. And I, I, I think I had a great time at FIDA and getting to know people, farmers, kinky sellers, and it gave me, I must say that it was, it was one of the best times of my life. I had all these inspirational women above and around me, and then I had a client. It was, a, it was a, an excellent mix. And I was going to say, like you were saying, meeting farmers and women in the market and, and being engaged, that has helped you as a judge, hasn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think I've never forgotten who is important. And, and the, I think that the most important person in the community is the weakest, the most vulnerable. And, 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 and that is why excellence is, excellence is important to the, to the dot. You know, the consideration must constantly be who you are serving and what that means to the wider community, if it's a mother, the children who are affected by it, the, 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 there's a wider community that is benefiting from the service you are giving to anyone. And I've never forgotten that. That was a lesson, too, that you shared those years. Of course, you never really stopped teaching. You shared <laughs> with your students, right? Yes. I, I, I still am very active teaching judicial ethics. That's one of the subjects that I teach if, uh, uh, at the Judicial Training Institute. It's a subject I love. Um, I teach it to judges, I teach it to secretaries, to administrators, everyone employed in the Judicial Service of Ghana and um, during their orientations and at different parts of their journey. Uh, I, I, I think the ethical content of our, our, our work is a necessary um, and when one needs to remind us all constantly about it. And, and that ethical grounding helps instill trust in the people that you serve, right? I believe so. I believe so. I, I, I believe that you need to be trusted. You know, the work of the law is a bit mystical to people. They get confused. In the courtroom, this is where rules meet with facts and sometimes a person may lose a case not because in substance they don't have a good case but because a fraction of time there's a horrible technical mistake and somebody has been reckless enough not to have filed the suit within time 
and 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 in, in that context, it's necessary to let the 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 stakeholders know why what has what happened. Why did you win? Why did you lose? And and and, and so this is why I am very committed to co- the constant conversation around ethics. When you are a judge, you have to be aware of your boundaries. You are always on display wherever you are. Your behavior is being measured. <laughs>